Hello, welcome to my bench. Today we've got something a little newer than we're normally working on. This is from uh, around 1999. <laughs> newer, yeah. Um, this is a Mackie HR 824 high resolution active studio monitor. Uh, I don't know which way to put this, but here it is. And evidently it's been down for months and nobody's told me about it. And I finally got it in yesterday. And uh, the engineer said, hey, can you fix this? I went, okay. It problem was, when you turned it on, it made a horrible loud buzzing noise. I mean, 60, 60 cycles with the audio running on top of it. Uh, it was not... Um, it, it was bad. Uh, so first thing I thought was, of course, capacitors, because it's 1999. And I went about checking the caps. These guys here, 10,000 microfarads at 50 volts, they're fine. I mean, they have zero ESR. They're, they're great. Uh, these two here and this one here, uh, they're 470 at uh, 50 volts. They're fine, too. Um, you know, so then I started uh, checking uh, to see what was going on with it, uh, with a scope, and I noticed that tracing it down over in this section over here, um, this section is part of the preamplifier circuit, which I'll show you on the schematic. Uh, all of the audio that was coming into the system up until this point was fine. Uh, I put in a thousand hertz and it was fine. Uh, and it didn't start getting any kind of showing any signs of, of you know the, the, the noise it was making until you went to the output of the first Q14, this first transistor here. Uh, which was a square wave, a uh, very nice, perfect square wave. And it was doing it to both sides of this system. Because this has a low frequency uh, input and a high frequency input, and the speaker itself has tweeters and woofers and a passive reflex on the back. Uh, so, of course, I went and checked all the transistors are good and all the resistors and diodes and things that I could find were good. Uh, and so I started tracing it back and I've already got it fixed so I can't actually show you what happened or what it was doing but it, I, I thought it would be interesting to just you know give you the idea of how I went about finding this. Uh, I'm not a big believer in just shotgunning things. Uh, I never have been so Basically, what I did here on the schematic, um, if you look at this first part of this amp of this preamplifier, where I was telling you on Q14, the input was fine, the voltages were fine, everything was great. But then on the collector and the emitter of Q14, I had this square wave. I mean, just a beautiful square wave, and I started. Uh, going backwards as far as I could to try to figure out what it was and immediately realized that it had this interesting little thing well not immediately it took it took a while it has this interesting little thing called AC2 if you look at this if you look on here the AC2 comes directly off of the transformer on a tap off the top of the uh, full wave bridge rectifier which on the board is right here and it goes over to this AC2 input to a diode this D25 and into a uh, transistor uh, which is Q43 eh, somewhere around here um, I didn't actually Q43 is around here someplace but it, it um, 
the the diode and the transistor are or capacitor are right here. This is the diode, and this is the capacitor. Now, what happened is this capacitor. This is a 10 microfarad capacitor at 50 volts. Went bad. I mean, totally bad. Um, and I'll show you on the little capacitor tester here. It's reading about oh 3.94 ohms at 0.14k, which means that it's as high as this tester will go. It means that this little bitty capacitor is bad. Now, why did that do what it did to this? When I put it back in here, uh, turn it on, I'll show you. We're going to find now. Why did that happen? Well, it happened because uh, this little circuit here has something to do, it says fast off, so it has something to do with the muting when you turn the thing off, I guess. But what happened is, if you look at it, this is a negative voltage. The AC from the transformer is going into that uh, D25 diode, and it's controlling the that Q43 uh, transistor on the swing of voltage from the input bias to the plus 15 yeah the plus 15 volts and basically would either turn on or off that transistor which goes over to the muting section without that capacitor on there well the capacitor being totally bad without that capacitor being on there basically it was turning there was there was no ripple control on a on a half wave rectified AC signal down to you know just lumps it was turning on and off this transistor and muting and unmuting the whole system that's why it was doing it on both sides of the of the uh, uh, the amplifier and the first thing it hit me was yes it was doing it to both sides of the amplifier hmm um, so it had to be something common and as far as I can tell these amplifiers are completely isolated from each other and separated so this is pretty much this muting section is pretty much the only thing that's common to both sides anyway I guess the moral of the story is when you're going about on older equipment and you're checking the capacitors do not ignore these little guys check them all out. I did replace all the rest of them in here and none of the rest of them were horribly bad. You know, some of them were an ohm or two, but none of them were bad and there there's a whole bunch of them. There's 10s and 47s and 4.7s. But this one was bad. And it caused the problem. So interesting little little device. Pretty nice speaker. It's got got some pretty good I think it's 39 39 Hertz to 20 K when it's set up right uh, and like I said it's been in service since uh, 2000 uh, continuously on the uh, in one of the studios so there you go I, uh, little little track down on why this thing was doing what it was doing and uh, just make sure you check these little guys too because they go bad also all right, thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. At least this one's a short one.